This is the second of two World Sociology screencasts looking at different indicators of development. So thinking back to the last screencast, we looked at economic development, uh, focusing on gross domestic product, and we also talked about human development, focusing on things like health, education and gender equality. Uh, what I want to have a look at in this screencast is the concept of sustainable development. Now the desire to promote economic development and at the same time uh, promote the need for a healthy planet can sometimes appear to be contradictory. So rapid economic development or the high levels of consumption that we associate with a Western lifestyle um, might lead to the depletion of natural resources at a rate which exceeds their replenishment. So this tension that exists between uh, economic development and the planet's finite natural resources has led some sociologists to focus on the concept of sustainable development. And sustainable development is defined as development which meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. So it's about handing over a happy planet to future generations by ensuring that we do not deplete natural resources at a rate which exceeds their uh, replenishment. In other words, sustainable development is development which conserves the natural environment and therefore ensures that future generations have the right to the same uh, living standards that we currently enjoy. And a widely used indicator of sustainable development is the concept of an ecological footprint. And the ecological footprint of an individual person is a measure of the amount of land uh, required to provide for all of their resource requirements, plus the amount of vegetated land required to absorb all of their CO2 emissions and also the CO2 emissions that are embodied in the products that they consume. And ecological footprints are expressed in units called global hectares. And currently, about 2.1 global hectares is considered to be a fair share of the world's resources. And we can see in this map that the more economically developed countries at the north um, have an average ecological footprint that is well in excess of the 2.1 figure that I've just mentioned. But it's people in poor countries who are most at risk from environmental decline, even though the underlying problem is overconsumption in the rich countries. And so uh, environmental problems such as climate change have the greatest impact on the poor in developing countries. Just to give you a simple example, uh, this is a map of Uganda and Uganda's main export is coffee. And we can see in this map the areas of Uganda that are currently suitable for the cultivation of coffee as a cash crop. However, an increased temperature of just two degrees would be potentially devastating to this really important cash crop. And so a poor country like Uganda uh, that earns a lot of foreign currency through the export of coffee is very, very vulnerable uh, to climate change. And many sociologists would argue that the environmental challenges that we face are so great that we need a new paradigm on development, a completely new way of thinking about the relationship between the economy uh, and the planet. So we should no longer think about the planet as simply a subsystem of finance in the economy and instead we need to put the planetary's finite resources at the centre of everything that we do. As Kenneth Baldwin has argued, anybody who believes that exponential growth can go on forever in a finite world is either a madman or an economist. And one alternative way uh, of thinking about the economy is an approach called Buddhist economics. 
And this is an approach based on a very famous book by E.F. Schumacher called Small is Beautiful, a study of economics as if people mattered. Uh, Schumacher was uh, chief economist to the U.S. National Coal Board for 20 years. And as part of his responsibility, he was sent on a mission to Burma, which is a country in Southeast Asia, and he was sent there uh, to teach the Burmese people how to achieve progress by following the Western model of economic growth. However, once he arrived in Burma, he quickly concluded that the Burmese were better served by drawing upon their own traditions and their own culture rather than trying to copy the West. So as Burmese culture is based on Buddhism, Schumacher coined the term uh, Buddhist economics uh, to describe a model uh, that in complete opposition really to its Western counterpart uh, didn't allow for unlimited growth and consumption, but instead emphasised the use of renewable resources and regarded employment as the path to personal fulfilment rather than a sacrifice of time uh, in exchange for income. So Buddhist economists are very critical of the Western preoccupation with the acquisition of consumer goods, what we sometimes call uh, consumerism. So Buddhist economics views Western consumer culture as a kind of illness, and the symptoms of this illness are things like overwork, uh, anxiety, depression, uh, time shortage, debt, a breakdown of family relationships, and ecological destruction. So from this perspective, the key to individual fulfilment and also a happy planet is resistance to advertising, resistance to uh, the cravings that we associate with consumer culture. And one way of ranking countries uh, according to the values that Schumacher promoted is something called the Happy Planet Index. And the Happy Planet Index is meant to be a global measure of sustainable well-being. In other words, what it's attempting to measure is the extent to which countries deliver long, happy and sustainable lives for the people that live in them. And in order to do this, the Happy Planet Index uses global data on three indicators. It looks at life expectancy, it looks at surveys that record people's experience well-being, and it uses the ecological footprint measure of environmental sustainability that we talked about earlier. So in this colour-coded map that you can see, the countries in green are the most successful uh, in delivering uh, sustainable well-being according to these three indicators. And the countries that are in the orange and the countries that are in the dark red are the countries that are the least successful. So the Happy Planet Index is essentially an efficiency measure. It's ranking countries on how many long and happy lives that they produce per unit of environmental input. And what's interesting is you get countries like Costa Rica and Vietnam uh, that head up the Happy Planet Index. And these are countries that on most traditional me measures of development would not rank very highly. Whereas the more developed, richer countries, such as the US, are much, much lower on the Happy Planet Index because of their high ecological footprint. 